don't rely on me. I can't hear anything. Well, it's not the thing. I, I can hear you. Oh, uh, hello. Testing, testing. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're good. I'm ready. I'm ready. to Atlanta Community Profiles, a show about living in Atlanta and purchasing a home here. Atlanta Community Profiles is hosted by Lou Whelan, who will talk to experts who know this ever-changing city and its real estate industry. We'll talk to mayors, community leaders, and residential real estate experts. Now, here's Lou Whelan with this week's Atlanta Community Profiles. Hello there and welcome to our show. My name is Lou Whelan. I publish the official relocation guides on Atlanta on behalf of the first multiple listing service of Atlanta. And we have publications for the metro area, one for Gwinnett in partnership with the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce, one for uh, Cobb County in partnership with the Cobb Association of Realtors, one for North Fulton in partnership with the North Fulton Chamber, and one for Inside 285. They're available in um, most real estate brokerage firms and chambers of commerce throughout the metro area. And I'm also a realtor with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Georgia Properties, and if I can help you with any of your commercial or residential real estate um, issues, I'd love to be of service to you. And um, my website is atlantacommunityprofiles.com, and the magazines are there along with a great deal of other information about Atlanta. And my real, real estate website is lewheelan.com, W-I-E-L-A-N-D. So let me know if I can, can help you in any way. And the real estate market forecast for this year, the balance of this year, is, uh, I think, strong. And uh, the last time I checked my crystal ball was, was yesterday. And um, I know we had a, a slightly uh, slight decrease in sales in the summer so far, but prices did not go down. <laughs> prices are up and will continue to increase throughout the year. And the problem, and the only problem in real estate is there's not enough supply. We have about half the normal amount of inventory, three about two, under three months, and the average is over six. So it's definitely a seller's market, and. Um, Anyway, that's just a quick overview, and um, as you know, every week we interview community leaders, people who are contributing to the well-being of our city and making sacrifices, and um, we like to bring some of those people on the show and uh, hear about their areas uh, of, uh, of involvement in contributing to the city, and today, what a great privilege we have uh, of, inter of interviewing a very special person the mayor of Lawrenceville, Georgia, Dr. Judy Jordan Johnson. And welcome back. What a delightful opportunity this is to have you back on the show again. Thank you, Lou. It's always a pleasure to be with you. And I uh, certainly hope your crystal ball projection comes true for the housing market at the end of this year. Uh, well, I'm uh, counting on it. I think um, it varies by area of town. Six percent increase in prices, and when when we when we talk about increase in prices, what we're talking about is increase in the prices of homes sold year over year. So not everybody's house will be there, but that's an indication for sure. That's what the reality is, and where we're going. And what a great pleasure, Judy, to have you on the show. If you don't mind, if I call you Judy, we've been on the show now three or four times, and I get to know you pretty well. So I feel like we're on a first That's name fine. basis. And um, you know, your dad was the uh, was the mayor of of Lawrenceville. He was the mayor for, for sixteen years, and quite an individual. They they named a park there after him. They did. He has a great legacy and his tenure as mayor, and I'm very proud that he had the park named after him. Yeah, I'm sure that's a very nice thing. Now, um, you um, were actually born in Lawrenceville, too. Not, I was. You didn't move here from New York City, right? I did not. I know uh, you went to school in New York State, though, didn't you? I did, to so. get my master's, but I am a true Lawrencevillian. Yeah, of course. 
So, and uh, you were you were a school teacher at one time. I was. You're married to a school teacher. Is he still teaching now? Or? He is not. He has retired from oh. teaching. Okay. So, um, now you served in the city council from 2003 to 2008. You were elected mayor in 2010, and uh, your first term began 2011. That's and, correct. Um, I would. I mean, we're, we're going to do a profile in, of your city, but I would like to ask you now. You've been the mayor for what six years? Six years. This is my sixth year. What What is your greatest feeling of accomplishment in six years? My greatest feeling of accomplishment is when the uh, city council voted to purchase land for a green space. And we have now a, a Marksville lawn, which is a, a little over three acre green space so that we can host concerts and family movie nights and different events for our community and to enjoy. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. That, um, that seems to be in demand these days throughout the country. Not, I know in Denver where my son lives, they have a big park like that too and it's a huge draw people love it, it increases property values to not only residential but commercial property values well i think the importance of the green space is more than just bringing families and communities together but it shows a investment that we have made in our city and we hope that that investment will attract private development and there will be other avenues other green spaces other trailways infrastructure that is a result of us beginning that first step of purchasing the green space. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about economic development today. In the past, we've talked mostly about not too much on that, but we'll get into that today because a lot of good things are happening over there. I know, but um, you are the little, uh, you are the uh, county seat for the county. We are. Lawrence is the county seat of Gwinnett County. And... Um, you have a population of about 30,000. That is true. 13 yeah. square miles. And you're the second oldest city in the metro area, only second to the city of Atlanta. That is true. We're very proud of, of having the heritage that we have. And I just saw on your website that you've just recently passed a budget of $180 million, And I think you said that that's the third largest operating budget for an incorporated city in the metro area it is the third largest with just over 180 million uh, 182 at, million i'm sorry uh, atlanta and marietta or marietta uh, and but you are uh with a population of 30,000 uh you're the second largest city in gwinnett county correct only peachtree corners that is correct so when Peachtree Corners was incorporated, they became the largest city. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, a vibrant city. And one of the greatest things that I like about your great city is the downtown. So everybody these, day, these days is talking about a walkable downtown, and there's nobody who can compete with you in that, as far as I can tell. Well, thank you. We are proud of our walkability in our downtown, and we have been able to establish restaurants that are unique and that brings people to not only eat downtown but we also have the aurora theater we have a lona art gallery so we have a lot of amenities that spark people's interest to come and see our downtown i just I wonder how many other cities offer a ghost tour besides you have you are you the only city in that has a ghost tour or? i don't know if we're only city that has a ghost <laughs> tour but we are glad that we have the ghost tours, and uh, they are quite popular. I know. Tell us about that. How does that work? Well, the ghost tours were started uh, in cooperation with the Aurora Theater, and throughout our history, when you take a ghost tour, you have a guide, and the guide tells you of the different happenings that happened in the city of Lawrenceville, and some are ghostly, and others are just history facts. But it's a great tour. It's a about an hour and a half walking tour. There are weekends when we have a ghost tour that goes through the cemetery. 
and I have been on that tour, and it will leave you wanting to leave the cemetery quickly. <laughs> well, is that at night? or is that It is day? at night, yeah. All the tours start at night. And how do you get on their reservation to get on that tour? Do you need a ticket, or how does that work? You don't necessarily need a ticket. It just depends on the night. Uh, ticket is preferred, but they do take walk-up people. And if you go to the auroratheater.com, their website, then you can sign up for the ghost tours because it is a part of that facility. They oh. actually provide the actors and actresses that take you on the tour. Okay. Well, storytellers help that. The storytellers. They are great storytellers. Yes, they are. Yeah, this is fantastic. So we will be talking more when we get back after the break about some of the um, – Ways that you plan to spend your $182 million. <laughs> And uh, that's uh, a nice chunk of change to, to have. Is that what, what kind of an increase is that over previous? It's about a 4.2 increase over previous budget. Okay. Yeah. A lot of, but uh, in that increase, we have had some personnel hires. And so that's always a, a good problem to have is to be able to grow and have people. First question we after we get back from the break will be, what is your number one priority with that? Okay. And stay tuned. We'll be right back. So when I don't hear, it's, it's going like I couldn't hear myself on a couple of times. Sometimes it comes to you. Yeah, I hear it now. Yeah. Priorities and Welcome back. I'm Lou Whelan, uh, sitting here with Dr. Mayor Judy Jordan Johnson of the great city of Lawrenceville, Georgia, the second largest city in Gwinnett County, population of 30,000 and growing. And um, the mayor has uh, been talking about in the previous segment about some of the uh, accomplishments that she's very proud of. And I forgot to ask you, maybe I should ask you, uh, you'll probably be mayor for another 20 or 30 years. What do you think is your biggest goal as mayor going forward? Well, I hate to disappoint you, but I probably will not be mayor for 20 or 30 years. But my uh, biggest goal is to see a vibrant downtown with the growth on the outskirts of the town so that our whole community is proud of our town. And I also want to see the communities uh, come together in our neighborhoods and be proud of what we have done and what we are doing. Really, that is a goal for a lot of cities, having a vibrant downtown. Live, work, and play is kind of getting old. That's an expression, and somebody will come up with a new expression. But still true. 
downtown is very important. It's what everybody's looking for, not only the millennial generation, but also the active adult population. That is true, and I, I do think sometimes the phrase live, work, and play uh, will get old, but we just uh, had a new branding for the city of Lawrenceville, and our branding is Heart, Art, Smart. Because we have Gwinnett Medical Center in our city limits. Uh, we have the Aurora Theater, which is the hub of our art scene. And we have Georgia Gwinnett College, which is an uh, educational university. And so we like to now say that we're heart, art, smart in the city of Lawrence. Really, I bet a lot of people that uh, come to, the, you have a convention and visitor center too, right? A, a visitor center, maybe not a convention, but a visitor center at least right there in downtown we have a visitor center we have moved that visitor center to city hall because we have people that actually come to city hall mm -hmm. and want to inquire about our downtown and what we have to offer so we've moved the visitor center mm -hmm. right well and, and go, that's a, a good idea to go over there if you're as you're beginning your visit to get gather some information about the city what kind of information is available over there about the we have maps that will tell you where our restaurants are, where walking trails are. We have a walking trail that goes around our historic courthouse, which we're very proud of. We also have a veterans museum in our historic courthouse that many people are interested in. It. And so the material that we have just tells you the different restaurants, the different places to visit that will make your stay or your visit in Lawrenceville enjoyable. You have a farmer's market there, too, right? At least it's put on your website. Is that still pretty active? We had a farmer's market. We do not have a farmer's market currently uh, because of the other infrastructure and improvements that we're beginning to make in okay. our downtown. Okay, so um, the tell us, I would like to ask you about your the contrast to Heritage Trail. Explain to people that versus your new uh, park, linear park. Tell us a little bit about those two, if you would. Please. I will. Our Heritage Trail is a trail that began with the conception of uh, the Downtown Development Authority and that we wanted a trail that told the story of influential people in the history of the city of Lawrenceville. The trail actually begins at the Fallen Heroes Mu Museum, which is at the Gwinnett Justice and Administration Center, and it, it goes uh, through our downtown and ends up at Rose Jordan Park. And along that trail, we have medallions that are placed in the trail. When the trail was first conceived, we thought it was a great idea to have a trail, but what would people do except walk the trail? So we wanted them to be involved in the history of the people that contributed uh, in some way to the city of Lawrenceville. So that's how the medallions began. Uh, we have placed two medallions each year for the last four years, of residents who have contributed uh, to the history of the city of Lawrenceville. Now, the linear park that we are in the process of building uh, with our one million uh, infrastructure money that we have and, and we'll use around the downtown is going to connect Georgia Gwinnett College to our downtown. So it's going to be a linear park. That's going to be pedestrian, bicycle, walkability, vehicle, um, so that we can bring not only the students but the faculty to the downtown through a easy access because it will be a linear park. And how long? How long is that park? Did you say? Two point two miles. Two point two miles. Mm -hmm. Nice stroll. That's a, back that's four, a stroll. Over four miles round trip. <laughs> Pretty good walk, but that's a great. That's a great uh, new feature. Too. Well, one of the interesting uh, aspects about this park is that it's bicycle friendly. And the last couple of years, my staff and myself have gone to Georgia Winnett College and biked with their students to the Lawrenceville Lawn, which is our green space. And once we got the Lawrenceville Lawn, we had a picnic up on the lawn, and then they biked back. And so we were looking forward to a bike share where they can come and ride their bike and then enjoy the downtown. Fantastic. And um, I know that the millennial generation is the 
poised for major new home purchases. And um, just because of normal getting a little bit older and about that time, and I'm sure that will be a major attraction for them. We hope so. We hope that we have a diversified housing market uh, so that we have housing that is attractive to all groups um, that are in our society. You are are you um, you don't have a lot of less space left. I see 13 miles. Do you have are you pretty much built out or what? We are built out. However, we have some new housing units that are going to be uh, prominent in our downtown. Uh, one of the housing units that we just announced uh, a couple of weeks ago was a $20 million project, and it's going to house 58 units, and those units are just going to be uh, one block from our downtown square. So we're excited about that. We may be built out, but we still have room in the downtown for housing opportunities. What's the price range of those? Is it under three or Round three. Or. The price range uh, will probably be uh, in that area, although I can't uh, mm-hmm. specifically say what the price range will be at this point. But we are uh, partnering with Rich Fort Properties, and we're excited about the investment. Right. Now, you have a downtown, you have quite a few plans. You have a downtown master plan, a, a develop, downtown development authority, a 2020 master plan in a 2030 master plan and you also have a downtown architectural review board is that correct we do so you have a lot of planning going on over there must be expecting something big there so got any good secrets you can tell us today that nobody else knows we can be the first to break actually i won't tell anybody if you do I, I know you I, told me that you had some plans. I cannot tell you any secrets, but I can tell you that in the next weeks or months, we have some pending success stories that we're going to announce and we're very excited about. Um, and that's really all I can tell you at this point. Mm. Well, I took a class in negotiating, but I never really, this, I guess I, I'm not going to exercise everything that I learned there. But is it, let me ask you, is it, is it to pertain to economic development or commercial or residential or attracting business or well i think economic development is all of those when when you attract housing when you attract business when you attract retail or restaurants is all economic development Uh, so the just as the housing that i mentioned a few minutes ago that we have announced it has retail and housing on that particular site so we're excited about that and i can just say keep your Eyes and ears open because mm-hmm. there's pending success stories coming from the city of Lawrenceville. Well, it's too bad that Lawrenceville is not a public corporation that you could buy stock in because based on this interview, I would definitely buy stock in Lawrenceville. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't you want some water? I can help you. Welcome back to our show. I'm Lou Wheeland, and what a privilege I'm having today to have the opportunity once again to interview the mayor of the second largest city in Gwinnett County, population 30,000, 13 square miles, Dr. 
uh, Judy Jordan Johnson, mayor of the great city of Lawrenceville. And um, I don't know, there's so much to talk about going on but in your great city, but one of the things that everybody is shooting for is developing a downtown, and you already have that. I'm sure that's a major advantage in attracting the millennials and the active adults, which is what a target for everybody. And you have planned and planned and planned, and that's sure nice to see that. I wish more government people would, government executives would, leaders would do that. And you have so many plans going on, but you have a downtown master plan and um, a 2020 plan and a 2030 plan. And would you mind just giving us a little bit of an overview or paradigm on where the planning is? Will will uh, which areas of town that'll affect and address? We do believe that you have a plan. You need to work the plan. We have been very fortunate to have a great staff and we have uh, Lisa Sherman as our director of economic and community development and as you mentioned earlier we have our downtown development authority uh, we have our planning and zoning board we have our architectural review board so in all of these plans our first step was to have a a nucleus in our downtown because we feel like once we had that nucleus uh, strong then we could move outward and that's where our plan began. So we have restaurants and new businesses that are coming to the downtown. And because of the investment that we have made, uh, there are businesses, opportunities on, on the outskirts of what we call the non-block area. The non-block area is our, our basic core of our downtown. And we have seen development uh, outside of that. And that's what we want. We want to continue to develop until our, our city limits are Limited, I guess you might say. Uh, one of the other plans that we have, uh, besides the development that we I have talked about, obviously, uh, is other housing development properties and other residential development properties and other business development properties. And as I said, those are success stories that you're just going to have to keep your eyes and ears open uh, for those announcements which are going to come in the next two or three weeks. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to hearing about that. We're, we're excited about it. Uh, we feel like that one of our strong points is in the city of Lawrenceville, we have for our citizens gas, water, electricity, street, and sanitation services provided. Uh, with that, we have an attraction to the businesses, and we have an economic development ordinance and our economic development ordinances allows us to give uh, waivers expedite zoning for businesses that are coming in and develop in our our city and so that's a great tool for us and also the downtown development authority is uh, has the support to give uh, tax credits and of course we are always looking at what the state and county uh, offer incentives as far as tax credits or job credits or things of that nature. So it's all a, a working part, and we're all in this together, and we do whatever we can to, to work our plan. Atlanta is, speaking of tax incentives and so forth, Atlanta is now the number one city in America in terms of move, motion picture production, television and motion picture production. Is that an industry that you target? It is an industry, and we have actually had that in our downtown. If you're familiar with the TV series Sleepy Hollow, it was filled in our downtown uh, last year and the year before that. So it is definitely a presence that we want to have and establish in the city of Lawrenceville. We are fortunate that outside of our city limits, we have uh, Gwinnett Technical College, and they have a film uh, studio, a film industry there, so that allows us to use that workforce um, when a film industry comes to our downtown. I know that that is one of the, one of the biggest problems um, is finding a labor a cameraman and so forth for production. And we feel like, as I said just a minute ago, that this will be a great uh, addition to 
film and industry coming into the city of Lawrenceville. We're glad of what we have, and we're looking forward to more. So you have a, a student enrollment of 12,000, and um, I think that school was started by the current president of the Gwinnett Chamber. Yes, it was. Dr. Dan Kaufman uh, was a charter president for George Gwinnett College. And as you said, they are 12,000 strong plus uh, that actually began classes yesterday. Okay. So, and how old is that school now? How long have they been in existence? 11 years. 11 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. I have the distinct privilege of working with um, the uh, for the production of this show, the mayor of Lawrenceville, Dr. Judy Jordan Johnson, a lifelong resident of Lawrenceville. A lot of exciting things coming up within the next few weeks over there. There are a lot of things coming up in the next few weeks. Got to keep your ears and eyes open. All right. I was hoping we might get an uh, insider tip but i guess that's not gonna happen over there so i guess i will but one thing you know we were talking about at the break is uh, the trends is uh towards the internet and digital and libraries have always been a mainstay in in communities and what is the from your perspective what what is your paradigm on libraries and their usage going forward and they're not ex they're not inexpensive to operate they are not inexpensive to operate, but I think libraries are parts of downtowns and parts of cities, and I certainly appreciate our library system. I think we have one of the best systems in Gwinnett County, and we are privileged to have a library in the city of Lawrenceville, as are other cities. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that the Internet uh, with young and sometimes a little bit older uh, residents is more convenient uh, but I don't think uh, reading and going in to the library and get a book is going to, going to go away. Well, that's good. I, I'm an old school guy that likes books. I have like hundreds of books, and I like to go back to them and sit down in a chair and read a book instead of taking out my laptop. <laughs> I enjoy reading also when there's something about turning that page. That's just really, uh, it's kind of like the newspaper. I like my newspaper, too. I am an old newspaper guy. I worked for the Wall Street Journal for 22 years, and trying to teach my grandchildren how to read newspapers is not that easy. It's a little bit of a struggle. But So you have a co summer concert series going on, and as we approach towards the end of the summer, what's on schedule? What do you have coming up that's fun? We do have a summer concert schedule. In fact, uh, two weeks ago we just had the Jimmy Buffett Tribute Band, and our Lawrenceville Lawn was... Uh, packed with residents and uh, citizens that enjoyed that concert. Uh, last Friday night, we had a movie on the lawn. Uh, that was a Lego movie. And we certainly enjoy having our families come and bring their children and just ha have a great experience under the stars. Coming up in September, we have our Rock and Rib Bill, which is our great festival. Uh, to began to celebrate Georgia Gwinnett College, and then it has turned into a uh, huge barbecue uh, feast and music and uh, it's on our Lawrenceville lawn and is really a great celebration and that's going to be coming up in September. And what is the name of that again? The Rock and Rib Fest. Rock and Rib? 
rock and rib, like barbecue ribs and, and music and rock music. Okay, <laughs> sure, sure. Rock, and rib, rock and rib. Rock and rib fast. Okay, I got it now. Good. So, you know, medical is another key factor as well as schools and and uh, evaluating communities and learning and edu- learning about them. And there's a change going on with Gwinnett um, Medical Center. There he is. Tell us a little bit about that and what we can expect or if we know anything really at this early stage. Gwinnett Medical Center is merging uh, with Northside Hospital or Northside Hospital is merging with Gwinnett Medical Center. Uh, and that is a change that is going to bring uh, different aspects to Gwinnett Medical Center. We don't know what that change will be yet because uh, as... Um, Phil Wolf, who's the CEO of Gwinnett Medical Center, said, uh, we're engaged. but well, we hadn't tied the knot yet. Uh, so there's a lot of things that have to be worked out. But uh, we do look forward to that merger. Well, that will bring other uh, services, I'm sure, because of all the resources that, that they bring to the table. It will bring a, a lot of services to our hospital that we may not have, and hopefully we have some services that they may need also. Mm-hmm. So there should be some synergy there. Now you have the Braves over there now, and the Braves are playing a lot better these days. How's that affecting things over there at the Gwinnett Braves? We love the Gwinnett Braves. Uh, they are outside the city limits, but we still support them, and, and I hope they do well. It's a great venue uh, for families to go to, and it's uh, – an economic driver, uh, because many people have to drive through Lawrenceville in order to get to the Cool Ray Field Stadium. And so sometimes when you drive through and you see a restaurant that has a unique name, you're probably going to stop there and say, I'd like to try it out. So, well, the Gwinnett Braves have their addresses, Lawrenceville, I would think, even though they live, I think they do. Right? Yeah, they're, they're, do, they're not in our city limits. They're not in the city no, limits, no, but no. You, can accept, you can take some of the credit for them. I, that is really one of the most beautiful venues around. You get to be very close to the game and the players. And it is. The field is what a great way to have, you know, have an enjoyable evening. And um, so what do you think about the population as a result of the fact that you have 13 acres or 13 square miles? I mean, what um, what kind of population growth can one anticipate going forward in you have a master plan that deals with that? We are working on our 2030 master plan, um, and so that will be coming out uh, in the next year, and we'll devise all our plans uh, that we hope to accomplish, and that we have goals that we would like to accomplish, and we have visions that probably we are not um, completely on, on board with yet, but we have visions that we're thinking about, and it, it takes all those plans coming together. I think our population will uh, be diversified. We are a diverse community. But as I mentioned earlier, what we want to have is housing that's available to those empty nesters, to those that want to stay in Lawrenceville and live downtown so that they can walk to a restaurant or walk to the uh, Aurora Theater after they come home from work. Uh, We have uh, housing for uh, empty nesters, as I said, and and housing for people that just uh, are, are single and just want to have a small place to live. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for coming on the show again, Mayor. It's always a great pleasure to have you and learn about your great city. And I wish you all the best and um, in uh, managing the continued growth and success. Thank you, Lou. It's always a pleasure. And thank you for uh, allowing me to come a little bit earlier. And I would just remind you... Uh, We have the resources, we have the vision, so keep your eyes and ears open for those ending success stories. I hope I'll uh, hear about that before anybody else. I can take advantage of the news. So now stay tuned for Dr. Bill Williams, Chairman and CEO of Swanee Dental Care, our dental health expert. 